Good morning! I'm reading Philippians right now, and I'm in Philippians 2, and so something that stuck out to me that I just kind of wanted to mention was, um, in Philippians, well, I'll just read this section, it's 2 through 18. It says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not to your own in- not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not, not only in my presence but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. And then it goes on, so that was to uh, 13, but the part that I was, um, I wanted to focus on was here, like, to 1 to, uh, really to um, 8. Um, and what is striking me here is that <clears throat> to make Paul's joy complete, he says to be like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. And then in um, verse 5 it says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. So in reading this, I go, okay, as a simple person who just wants to read the word of God and... Um, and receive what it says, not have to have it explained or deciphered. Um, I just want to read it and believe it because that's what he's called me to do is to believe his word. Um, and I, uh, and so as I read this, it says that I, um, should do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than myself. Um, and that I should have the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. So that means that if he is telling me, if the Lord is telling me in his word that um, I should do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, and that my attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, that means that he has equipped me to be able to do that and that I am capable of doing that. So I can't read this and go, well, he means that may be eventually, or whatever. Um, Or, yeah, as we grow in Christ, we'll grow in humility. If he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition, then that means do nothing out of selfish ambition. It doesn't mean try. You know, your attitude should be the same as Jesus. Um, So it doesn't mean try and figure out what that means for you. It means be the same. Uh, and so with that, that means that he's equipped us to do that. It means that when Jesus died on the cross, um, that he put to death all the sin that held me back, all the selfish ambition and vain conceit that, that kept me from walking humbly and to be able to consider others better than myself. He put that to death. Um, And then as uh, um, when he uh, was resurrected and now lives um, and he had and because he lives uh, and he has given me his Holy Spirit. Right. So he put his spirit in me and has given me the mind of Christ. That's Ephesians here. 
Let me just read that really quick because I don't remember the actual section of it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Where is it? Oh, is it Corinthians? Oh, it's probably Corinthians. Ah, I'm getting off track. Anyway, he says he has given us the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So um, if I have the mind of Christ, my attitude should be the same as Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that make sense? If, if he's given he, me his mind and he's given me his spirit, that means that it's him who dwells within me. So his Holy Spirit with his mind in me, that means that his attitude is within me. Um, his nature is within me. His humility is within me. Um, and so that means that I am therefore fully equipped to be able to walk like Jesus um, in the fullness of who he is in me, um, which is his fullness. He doesn't hold back for us. He doesn't give us a portion. He gives us himself. Um, he's, he, I have given him my life. I've died to myself and he's put his life in me and now lives in me. He's given me an, his heart, uh, his eyes to see, his ears to hear, um, uh, his heart for uh, the people in front of me and all around me, um, his mind. And so when I uh, seek wisdom and discernment, when I seek insight and understanding, um, he gives it to me because he's given me his mind. Um, and he's given me his spirit. So just in this little section, I guess I want to encourage you to, to know and have confidence in um, the truth of the word. If he says this to us, that means that he's equipped us to do it. Um, he's, a, he's a good God and a good father and, um, and would not ask us, uh, to do anything that we are incapable of doing. Um, and we know that we are capable because he is not just with us, but dwelling within us. And that's pretty darn big. So anyway, that's what I got for this morning. Okay, love you. Bye. Yay.